Okay, welcome to our next video. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to explore the concept of the chain rule. And what the chain rule allows us to do is it allows us to find the derivative of the composition of a function. Back earlier in the year, uh, during the, the summer review time, I had you um, decompose functions into the two simpler functions or possibly three simpler functions, and this is why we use it. Uh, all this theory stuff, all this f of y equals, excuse me, y equals f of x and u equals g of x and blah, 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 y equals f, f of g of x, man, it's just confusing. This, this also gets confusing, this part right here. I like this piece of it. The derivative of the composition of function is the derivative of the outside function at the inf inside function times the derivative of the inside function. That's what I like. Um, I, I, don't, I, I will, in my first couple of examples, use, like, rewrite it in terms of u. Um, that's conceptually what that's doing is it's it's doing this right here. It's putting it together this way. I will do that, but um, um, and then I'll put it all back together. But I really like the outside inside type part. I think it, you understand it a lot better. Lots of examples. First of all, I have the square root of x squared plus one. Um, I need to write that using fractional exponents, so I'm going to write it as x squared plus one to the one half. So then, if I look at it in terms of outside function, inside functions, u is x squared plus 1. I rewrite y as u to the 1 half. If I take the derivative of each one, du dx is 2x, uh, dy du is 1 half u to the negative 1 half times du dx. And then, Putting it all together, um, what I do is 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 um, I'm going to put u back in there, which is going to be x squared plus one. That goes in the denominator, and then I multiply it by two x, which is du dx. So dy dx, putting it all back together, is one. Uh, excuse me. Uh, let's not write that one. Oh, that's fine. Let's write that one. It doesn't matter. It's one over two times. Um, 2x, that's du dx, over x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Again, I think it's very complex to do it this way. 1 half and the 2 will cancel, so really I'm left with x over x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. I think it's much easier to... Um, I'm not, uh, I think it's much easier to do it this way. Um, so the reason why is, excuse me, it's much easier to do it as outside function, inside function. You'll see me do that in a minute. I think all this this stuff right here, you get yourself really confused as to what you're putting together. Um, take the derivative of the outside function, multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. It's it's much easier that way. So let's look at it, let's look at it this way. So if I'm trying to find the derivative f prime of x, the outermost function is raised to the seventh power. So bring that seventh power and down. So it's seven times x to the fifth minus 4x plus 8, reduce that power to 6, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside part, which is 5x to the fourth, minus 4. You do not have to raise that to the sixth power. You leave it like this. It's totally in a format that we, we can use, we can utilize in our next unit. I think that's a much easier way of looking at it. In our next example, we have it as a negative exponent, but it's done the same way. So, first of all, I'll rewrite y as 4x squared plus 6x minus 7 to the negative 3, using the, that notation that I have up there, dy dx. dy dx is negative 3 times 4x squared plus 6x minus 7 to the negative fourth power times the derivative of this, which is 8x plus 6. And then I put it all together. I can distribute this negative 3, so I get negative 24x minus 18 over 4x squared plus 6x minus 7 to the fourth power. And that's my derivative dy dx. And that's as far as you have to simplify it. You can't do much else with that. Just lots of examples here. Um, in this one, we want to write it to the one-third power. So rewrite f of x to the one-third power. So it's going to be 5x squared minus x plus 4 
to the one third. Bring down the one third. So f prime of x is one third times five x to the squared minus x plus four. So negative two thirds times the derivative of the inside part, which is ten x minus one. Now, technically, the way you'll see the answer written is this way. You're going to see it as 10x minus 1, that's my numerator, and then in the denominator I have 3 times uh, 5x squared minus x plus 4 to the 2 thirds power. I could write this as the cube root of this squared or something like that. That's my derivative. So you can see it you know, that way, you can see it this way. It, it's just, you know, some simplifying or moving things around once you have it in terms of negative exponents and positive exponents. Oh, this one gets interesting. This one gets interesting because I'm going to have product rule, and then within each product rule, I'm going to have chain rule, and then ultimately in the end, I have to simplify it so that I list it as the product of factors. So let's do this. I want to find the derivative. I'm going to take the derivative of the first function, so f prime of x is going to be, bring down that 3, so 3 times 2x plus 5, reduce the power by 1, squared, times the derivative of this inside part, which is 2, times the second function, which is 3x minus 1, to the fourth. That part right there is just the derivative of that first part. And then I'm going to add to that the derivative of the second part. It's the same thing, 4 times 3x minus 1 cubed times 3 times the first equation, which is 2x plus 5 cubed. <laughs> Then what I'm going to do, what I need to do, is I'm going to factor out what they have in common. Um, I'm going to factor out what they have in common, and I'm going, to left, I'm going to be left with a bracket, which I can simplify, and then I can write it as the product of factors. So 3 times 2 would be 6, and 4 times 3 would be 12. So they have a 6 in common. And then 2x plus 5, I have two of them here, and I have three of them there. So I can take out two of them, so 2x plus 5 squared. Here I have 3x minus 1. Uh, to the fourth, this one's cubed, so I can take three of those, so 3x minus 1 cubed. And now in my brackets, I'm going to put what I have left over. I've taken care of this, that's gone, I've, that's gone. I've taken care of that, that's gone. I have one of those, so I have 3x minus 1. Um, this, I just took care of, I have a 2 left there. And I took care of all of these guys, I took care of that guy, and I just have one of the 2x plus 5s left. Simplify what's in this bracket right here, and you got it. So it's 6 times 2x plus 5 squared times 3x minus 1 cubed times 3x, 7x minus 1 plus 10 is uh, plus 9. And before you ask me, yes, you have to do that. Yes, you have to simplify it to that level. Um, you have to write it as the product of factors. That way, when uh, you know down the road, if I ask you to solve it, set it equal to zero and solve it, you could do that. You could set each one of these individually equal to zero and solve them, um, and you know it, it makes it a little bit easier. So, but yes, you have to simplify it to that that level. Um, I want to find the second derivative. I have cosine of five x cubed. I find the first derivative, y prime. The outermost function is cosine, so the derivative of that is negative sine of 5x cubed, and then times the derivative of the 5x cubed, which is 15x squared. If I, I can't simplify it all, but I would rewrite it as negative 15x squared times the sine of 5x cubed. If I had to find the second derivative, I've got to use product rule. The derivative, of my, this is my one function, this is a second function. My, uh, the negative is out front. Um, the derivative of that first function is uh, negative 30x times the sine of 5x cubed. I'm going to add to that the derivative of the second function, which requires chain rule, should be cosine of 5x cubed uh, times 15x squared times negative 15x squared. This 15x squared comes from the derivative of, of that part right there because of the chain rule. This 15x squared is that guy right there. 
you would see this multiplied out. They'd write it as 225x to the fourth. Might factor it out front, maybe not. Um, anyway, so the second derivative is negative 30x sine of 5x cubed minus 225x to the fourth cosine of 5x cubed. You might see them, we might factor out like a 15x out front there, but nonetheless. Let's see what else we got. Tangent cubed of 4x. Now this is going to be chain rule within chain rule. The tangent cubed of 4x really means the tangent of 4x quantity cubed. It really means this. We write it this way, but this is what it means. Parentheses, tangent of 4x cubed. So now the outermost function is the cube function. The inner function is the tangent of 4x. So f prime of x is going to be, bring the 3 down, 3 times tangent of 4x squared times the derivative of tangent of 4x. The derivative of tangent of 4x is going to be secant squared of 4x times 4. Now it's chain rule within chain rule. It's chain rule twice. Because to take the derivative of the tangent of 4x is the secant squared of 4x times 4 because of the chain rule there. And then, yeah, you, you would see it simplified a little bit. We would write it as 12. Um, probably tangent squared of 4x, secant squared of 4x, something like that. And then finally, you get things like this, where we have the sine of the sine of x and find the derivative. Again, composition of a function. So f of x is the sine of the sine of x. The outermost function is that sine, inner function is that sine. So f prime of x is the cosine of the sine of x times the derivative of the sine of x, which is cosine of x. And you, you can't simplify that. You can't multiply those. You can't do anything with it. So it's just cosine of the sine of x times the cosine of x. All right, so again, just putting this all together, uh, uh, quotient, uh, excuse me, um, chain rule is built into a lot of the derivatives that we find throughout the rest of the semester and will also be built into a lot of the derivatives that you'll find on your AP exam. So it's just a matter of nailing down these concepts. I'll do some more examples of it in class, give you some multiple choice questions to take a look at, some things from previous exams, and um, hopefully get you some practice on. Best of luck.